Hello, good morning friends. Welcome back to your favorite channel Code One Digest. Today, in this video, we will run both our application as well as database in a Docker container and see how can we connect to it, how can we perform get and post operation on our microservices. So we'll be creating our microservice application, then we'll be deploying that application in a Docker container. At the same time, we will be deploying our Postgres database also in a Docker container. Both will connect with each other using a bridge network in a Docker container. And then we'll be accessing the database and we'll be accessing the microservices from outside in a post main API tool. Many people wants to learn how can we containerize our application, how to connect database in the containers and so on. So this video is going to cover each and everything. I'll show you step by step to create application running in a Docker container and connecting to a database running in a Docker container. So this video is going to be very exciting, very informative. There's a lot to learn in this video. So stay with me till end of this video. Yes. Sir. Okay friends. So before we proceed in this video, let me show you what are we trying to achieve in this video through an architecture diagram. Okay, because it is going to be a very important video and I want to show you with a diagram that what are we trying to achieve in this video. So as I said, I'll be running my Postgres DB in a Docker container. So this blue area, what you see here is uh, my container. Okay, and this whole green area is my host machine, what you see. So my host machine is running two Docker containers, container one and container two, right? And in, in container one, I'm running my Postgres DB. So Postgres DB is coming from Docker Hub repository. I'm downloading an image of Postgres DB from Docker Hub repository and I'm running it here in this container. And we are doing a port mapping. We are running a Postgres DB in 5.4.3.2 in that container, but in the host, we'll be accessing it on 5.4.3.5, right? So this port mapping is required because external application will be hitting the host port and that host port is mapped to 5432 of container port. So that, that is how this database will be accessible outside the container. Then in second container, I'll be running my microservice application. Okay, here this is Spring Boot microservice application is running in this container on port 8080 inside a container, but outside will be accessing that application on 8081 port. Right, same way we are doing a port mapping here. Now we have to understand that communication between the two container happens through a bridge network. So always remember that the communication between these two containers is through a bridge network. And while accessing the application within a container itself, they don't require port mapping. They can directly access the application on their container ports. So this microservice application running in a container two can access database running in container one on the same port 5432 on a container port, right? Friends, before we proceed in this video, I want you to subscribe my channel to grow Code One Digest family. Friends, I'm creating a lot of quality contents for you, but I'm not getting subscribers. I want you to like, share, and subscribe my channel so that I can grow Code One Digest family. Thank you. Okay friends, so now the prerequisite for this video is you must have a Docker installed and ready in your machine. You must have a Docker Hub account because we'll be downloading an image from Docker Hub account. Then you must have a DB viewer or PG admin installed and ready so that you can connect to database and perform certain operation on database. So any of this tool is okay. Then you may have IntelliJ ID or Eclipse ID installed in your machine to follow the code that I am showing in this video and you must have a postman API testing tool installed and ready so that you can test the get and post contract at the end of this demo right okay friends so now let's start with postgres database installation setup in docker container let me quickly show you what is docker hub and how can you download image from there so this is the URL of docker hub, hub.docker.com. I'll share that in 
my video in the description section. You can access that or you can search Docker Hub in a Google and it will take you here. Then you have to log in. I have logged in with my credential. You can create a new account and then start using it. This is my repository. This is my images. But what we want here is the Postgres database. So what you have to do is we have to search Postgres here. You can see the Postgres is available and there are multiple tags available here. We will be downloading the Postgres using tag. We can go to tags and see. I'll take this 12 image. I'll copy this and then we'll download this image into our image repository. So let me clear this. Docker PS. So I'm not running any container as of now and Docker images. So these are some images available. If you see one Postgres image is also available that but will not use this is the latest one but will not use this Postgres uh, whatever I am downloading that I'll use in this demo and yeah so now what we are doing it we are downloading this Postgres 12 Alpine to our local image repository yes so it is the, it started downloading it will take few seconds to download yes so it says download complete yeah so it says it's now completed now let's see docker images yes so you see this postgres tag 12 alpine is the image that we have downloaded just now and we will use this image to start our postgres database in a docker container okay friends so now we are ready to run our postgres image into a docker container but before that we'll prepare a command because we have to expose ports and 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 so on let me show you where you get the basic command first so you go back to your docker of repository and then on this image overview come down they will give you a reference command to start postgres instance they have given docker run minus name some name of your container and then minus e option you have to give they are saying that you have to pass the password of your choice while starting this image so we can give a password of our choice here and then minus d the image name copy this command and then we can customize it for our requirement let me show you that yeah so if you see the syntax of docker run command is docker run minus p p will use for for port mapping and minus p option with host port colon container port host port is a port where we'll use in our application and our database tool to access postgres database and container port is the port where exactly our postgres database is running and then image id a final command if you see at the bottom docker run minus minus name and i'm giving the name of my container is postgres 12 because i have down downloaded postgres 12 then minus the option I'm giving a password postgres and then I'm using minus p option to create that port mapping from container port to host port then minus d this is the image id so I have prepared this let me go back to the terminal and see let me clear this <coughs> docker images now we'll run we'll copy that command and we'll run it let me copy that command so I have that in my text pad I've copied it and let me paste it here and this is my image id if you see this is the same image id in the image list now let me start this yeah so it says started let us see if it is running now what we'll do is we'll try to connect from our db viewer database tool and see if we are able to connect and then we'll perform certain database operation like create schema create table insert data and so on we'll do that now I'm using this database tool. So very first thing that we have to do here is we have to go into database and then create a driver manager. Okay, let us create a new driver for Postgres 12 running in a container. So if you see here, this is a configuration. This is the name of driver I have given. Postgres 12 container selected. It's a Postgres type. This is my driver class. This is the URL of my database. 5435 is the host port that is mapped to 5432 inside a container so this port you must remember in the url you have to give then default port 5435 this is a database name 
postgres and this is a database name postgres and this is my default user so i have to give all of this in library you have to give a jar file of your postgres driver jar file so you can download this driver jar from postgres website you can search in google and download this jar i will provide a link for this jar also and then add that here if you are using pg admin so you don't have to download it will be part of your pg admin setup once this is done once this driver is ready say okay and then we'll create a connection now so come to a database navigator say right click and create new connection so in this new connection now search for our driver postgres so this is our driver postgres 12 container say next so you can see here it is pointing to localhost and database name is postgres port by default selected 5435 and here it is asking for username and password if you remember while running our database we have given the password postgres so i have given this password here now rest of the thing is coming by default from a driver jar you will leave it you first test the connection it is able to connect or not yeah so test connection says it is able to connect to that database running in a container right so say okay and let's connect that say finish it has created a new connection here on your database navigator just open that open database you can see that postgres database is visible here now open schema so it has one public schema available here now what we'll do is we'll create our custom schema and some of the table and see if if we are able to play with some data or not okay, okay friends so now we are ready to play with our database we'll create a schema and we'll create table and then we'll insert data into a table and then we'll see so before that we'll make sure that we have connected to the right database you can fire this command select version to know which version you are connecting to so you're right it is saying to postgres 12.12 .12, right so if you remember we have downloaded this 12.12 .12 from our docker hub so it is connecting and printing that version now this is a command which will create a custom schema for us let me select this and then yeah so it says that the schema is created let refresh here the schema list and see what is visible yes so it is visible now if we open this schema there is no table available inside this schema right so now what we do is we'll create one customer table inside that schema using this command in customer table I'm having four attributes one is ID that is the primary key and then name it's a character then age integer and role again character so we'll create this table let me run this yes so table is created let's refresh this table and see if the table is created yes so table is created and it is having those four columns we can see those four columns now what we'll do is let me insert some of the data into this table and see i have prepared the insert statement yeah so insert into schema name dot table name and uh, attributes are column names are id name age and role and then i'm inserting this user pavan okay let me give id 2001 pavan with 32 and then this value and let's fire this first to see if do we have any record already so we don't have it's an empty table as of now let me insert this record yes so it says inserted let's fire the select query and see if the records are showing up yes so it's showing up i can see that user is inserted okay, okay friends now we'll see how to do a spring boot microservice project setup so i'll show you how can you do that and i have already created a project for you so if you want to learn how can you create a spring boot project from scratch so for that I have already created a video in past you see this first video a spring boot project setup step by step tutorial in IntelliJ for beginners so this video you can follow from my playlist and that will guide you how can you create a project from scratch in this video I'll directly jump to a project and I'll show you what code i have written for the microservices i'm not going to cover the project setup intellij configuration in this video okay friends now let us start with the spring boot microservice project 
So this is a project that I have created. So this is a very basic project. In the pom.xml, I have added certain dependencies because you are working with the Postgres. So you have to define a Postgres dependency here. So this is a Postgres dependency that you have to define here. I have shared this project in my GitHub repository. So you can download that project and play with it. Just follow me in this video and then you can download the project and start working. I'll be sharing all the commands, all the database queries, everything in as a part of that project. So it will be there for you. Let me quickly show you my project, GitHub project. Yeah. So this is my GitHub project. Let me show you the code. So uh, let me go to the source folder in the main folder, then in Java folder, I have this main class. This is our main java class of our spring boot application having a spring boot application in notations here then i have a controller layer then i have a business layer and then i have a repository layer as i shown you in the architecture diagram right so these are the three layers that i have i have written one controller uh, class that is customer controller having two endpoints here get customer to get customer information and post customer to insert customer information right so here in this get customer i'm using a path variable so it is a path variable so i have selected path variable here and name and then i'm calling a business layer class that is customer service class here there is a method in business layer class that is get customer by name we'll see that what is happening there we'll go to that customer layer class so this is my customer service this is my business layer class in this get customer by name uh, it is referring to my repository interface so i have written this interface and extending this crude repository so this crude repository is part of our jpa libraries jpa dependencies so here we have to provide a domain object our domain object our entity object so we are working on a customer table we have also defined this domain object and the reference of the domain object will give here in this repository what we are telling this repository is all our operation in this repository is going to be on this entity object. So I am going to fire all my queries onto this entity on this table. So I'll show you that entity class as well. So what operation we have defined in this interface here? Find by name. Okay. This is standard uh, and naming of, of a method. Okay. In JPA that find in camel case. In, uh, in camel case form find by name where you will pass a name and then it will give you a list of customers okay i am taking list because we can have a customer with the same name so it, it will give you a list of customer object then find by role also have defined but in this demo i'll be using find by name other method like find by id or save these are already provided by crud but this CRUD repository we don't have to define it here again because those basic operation of save delete and find by primary key all those methods are already defined and part of this so those methods will be available to us directly for use you will see that let me show you my domain entity first domain object first so this is my domain object customer and i have defined is at a, as an entity and you have to map it to a respective table in your database. So I have defined at the rate table and table name is customer and my schema name is customer microservice demo. So this is my schema name and this is my customer name so that when the JPA works, it, it relates this class with the table and I have to define all those four attributes that we have defined in the table. Let me show you here. So ID, name, age and role right so same attributes we have defined here and we have defined at the rate id we are saying that this is a primary key so in service class also in business layer class also i have defined two methods get customer by name it is taking a name and and calling repository dot find by name and getting the customer list and returning that customer list same way i have a add a customer add customer is a method defined in the business layer where i am passing a customer object as is and then it is calling customer repository dot save let me show you my save endpoint in customer controller 
so we have this endpoint with a post mapping customer save now once it reaches to the service layer class the service layer class calls a repository layer class save method to save that into a repository okay friends okay now let's understand the application dot properties file because in application dot properties file we will be providing a database configuration so let's understand that as we are running this application into docker container hence all the database configuration that we are reading must be coming from environment variable so we cannot hard code it because tomorrow if your database container details changes then you need not to rebuild your application again you can just change that in a in your run command and it will start working so instead of hard coding of those url here in application dot properties file i am reading all these data from environment variable because this properties file is going to be packed with the application image docker image hence the application should read all this data from environment variable and while starting our docker container for this microservice application we will set this environment variable so that the value to this environment variables is provided and application is is running and connecting to a right container with me if we don't do this if we don't read these values from environment variable and if we hard code it here then if my database container changes if ip address or port changes then i have to come back and again build my application build the application image docker image and restart my application so to avoid that restart to avoid that rebuilding of that image we are reading this configuration from environment variable right with me so i am reading the database url database username and password from environment variable and while starting the application in docker container i will give i will pass this environment variable with the value and those value will come in seats here in this with me okay friends now let's understand our docker file as we want to run our microservice application in a docker container hence we have to create a docker file to create our docker image of this application what is docker file docker file is where we define how to create image for my application we define all the dependencies required to build our application to build that image for my application and how we are going to extract that image and how we'll start that image all that information will go in a docker file so let's understand what information what instructions i have given here in this docker file the very first line what you see in the docker file is from open jdk 8 that means i want to download an image of open jdk 8 first because i will need a java to run my application inside a container consider a container as empty operating system running with no software nothing so inside that container if i want to run my java microservice application then i will need a java runtime environment to run my application right so in the image what we are saying is when you are packing this image for my application please pack it with the java 8 as well right so first line we are saying please download java 8 and then add target star.jar as application.jar so what it will do is while creating an image okay it will go inside target folder whatever jars are available in target folder will rename it to application.jar and put it into a image so it will copy that jar from target folder star.jar because we know only one jar will be there so it will copy one jar from target directory and name it as application.jar inside an image then finally what we are seeing is will expose 8080 port why 8080 because if you see in application properties i am running my application on 8080 port so when this application runs in a container it will be running on 8080 port inside a container and i want to expose that 8080 port outside hence i have written this instruction expose 8080 so the port of 8080 will be exposed will be available outside the container right so this port whatever port you put here in expose should be the same as whatever port you are using in your application configuration for your application if you are running your application here on some other port 
let's say 90 80 then you should expose the same port here in docker file as well so these two files must be in sync with each other for the port information okay then after that fourth line is entry point entry point is the instructions to start the application so what i'm saying is when all this thing is done and when the run command will trigger to run that docker image so run docker image command will call this command to start the application that is java minus jar application jar dot jar with me so now what we'll do is we will now go and build the image for our application using this docker file now let's first build this application through a maven command do a clean install let's do that it will build this microservice application and it will pack this application properties with environment variable configuration into a jar file so it will clean the target folder it will create a new jar file in a target folder that we'll use for our building right now it is done okay friends so now we are ready to build our docker image for our spring boot microservice application we'll be using this following command to build this docker image so let me explain we'll use docker build command minus f is for the docker file and minus t is for the tagging of the docker image so i'll be tagging my docker image with this name customer microservice with postgres db so this is a command let me go to a terminal yes so i am in terminal and let me see what all images i have so docker images i have these old images but our new customer microservice with postgres db is not here so we will copy that command and create an image this is a command i'll copy i'll paste it here right now i am running this command from the root directory of my project i am there in this project directory if you do see that docker file is lying here now i'll run that command with dot for the current directory now you see it is building that image it is downloading the java and packing the jar everything into one single image yes it is done let us see the docker images so now if you see this image is just created so now as we have already built the image now before we start our application into a container we will need the ip address of our database container which is already running because our microservice application container has to connect to database container for database right you remember in a configuration file we have given three parameters url of my database then username and password of my database so to prepare a url of my database i need an ip address of the container where my database is running so let me show you an architecture that we discussed if you see this microservice application is connecting to postgres db and this is container 2 this is container 1 hence these are like two different machines though these are virtual machines though these are virtualization every container has its own unique ip address hence this application to connect to this database requires ip address of this container so for that we have to find out the ip address of this container so that we can give that in a, our run command of this container right let me go to the terminal okay let's see uh, what all container is running docker ps so this is our postgres 12 is running as we started and this is a container id command to access the ip address of a container is docker inspect container id grip ip address let me do that docker inspect then this container id pipe symbol grip ip address yeah so what we will do is if we do docker inspect this container it will give me a lot of information in that information we just interested in the ip address hence i have given this grip ip address let me do that yeah so we got this ip address this is an ip address that we should be using in our application run command 
okay let me copy this come ip address first and keep it safe okay friends now it's time for us to start our microservice application in a docker container and how we'll do that we first have to prepare a docker run command here is a command that i have prepared docker run minus e is for environment variable minus e then postgres db url this is the variable environment variable that we have defined and i have given the data database url here jdbc postgres and this is the ip address of our database container and 5432 is a port where the database is running and this is my default database postgres database second environment variable is postgres db user and the user is postgres then third var environment variable is postgres db password and the password is postgres finally we are doing a port mapping as i said we are running our application inside a container on 8080 but outside we will be accessing it on 8081 and this is the name of my image right customer microservice with postgres db i'll just copy this command this is the same command i'll copy this command go to a terminal let us see what all containers are running docker ps so this is a container running which is our postgres container and see the images that we have so this is the image name let me copy that command let me paste that command now now let's give a hit let's see if if that is start successfully starting application it's able to connect to database as hikari pool is started okay it says dialect is also started hikari pool is also started very good so it says our application is successfully started now what we'll do is we'll try to hit those get and post contract from our postman and see if you are able to uh, get data and insert data into this data okay, so now it's time for us to test our application which is running in docker container and also our database that is running in a separate docker container and both are connected through a bridge network right so i am in a postman tool where i have loaded my get contract to test my guest contract this is a get method and i am using a contract here get customer by name pawan okay let me hit this yeah so i am getting a successful response that is 200 okay response and i got the customer information of customer pawan right let us see the logs so go to a terminal and see that it says this is a request received to a controller getting customer by name pawan then this is my business layer class <coughs> getting customer pawan from a repository and then it is calling a repository layer and receive one customer form from a database right now what we'll do is we will test post contract by adding a user okay let me give dummy id here and i'll give a name doku yeah let me hit and see if this is able to insert yeah so it is able to insert that user into a database i got 200 response let quickly see the logs yeah so it says adding user dugu to database added customer dugu successfully now what we'll do is we'll try to again hit the get contract with this new user and see if this is able to work yeah okay so we got 200 response again and we are able to fetch that user information from database it is always a good practice to clean up your resources be it your local machine or be it on cloud you must release you must stop all your running containers <clears throat> so i'll just show you how can you stop this containers otherwise you will be keep eating your resources unnecessary yeah so the command to stop this container is docker stop that container id yeah so it will stop that container now you can see it's only one container running again we'll run docker stop to stop our database container yeah so it will stop my database container so stop your container if you want you can delete those container as well 
docker ps now no container running but it will be there if we do docker ps all sorry docker ps minus minus all so it will show you that those containers are still there now if you want to release these memories then you can directly remove this by docker rm and give, give those container id it will delete these containers for you permanently yeah so you should always release the resources once you are done with your testing okay. okay friends now let me summarize quickly what we have learned in this video it was a very big video we have done a lot of things today so let me quickly summarize so that we are able to understand so first thing what we did is we downloaded a postgres image from docker hub then we started postgres image into a docker container then we created a spring boot microservice application right and prepared application dot properties to read database config from environment variable right then we prepare a docker file to build docker image for our application then before starting the application we fetch the ip address of our db docker container right we wanted the ip address of database container so that our application can connect to it then we prepared docker run command for our application with all the environment variable right to start our microservice application then we started our microservice application in a docker container at the end we tested the get and post contract in postman api tool successfully right okay friends so if you like this video so give it a thumbs up and do share it with all your friends and colleagues because this is very important information for a beginner and a student and if you are new to the channel so please do subscribe to my channel to grow code one digest family friends i am creating lot of quality contents on programming concepts coding concepts and cloud and container technologies spring boot framework java java framework java multi threading concepts design patterns architecture principle i am creating lot of videos on all these contents but i am not getting subscribers i need your help in growing the code one digest family so if you are new to the channel so please do subscribe to this channel and share it with all your friends and colleagues and help me growing the code one digest family thank you